If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. Night Shift Workers, what is the scariest, most unbelievable thing or entity you have seen on the job? I worked a day job and a night job, and I was in college, so my sleep schedule was really messed up for several months. One night, I was working alone. I did my work and had a few hours of downtime, so I tried taking a nap. I woke up to what sounded like someone inside the building, screaming nonsensically and smashing things. Like some psycho broke in and was tearing up the room. I ran to where the sound was coming from, and by then it stopped. I didn't see anything weird inside the room, everything was perfectly normal. I yelled, what the duck was that? My own voice came out very slow and deep, like when you try talking through a yawn. What's going on? The same thing. I looked around the other rooms and even outside. Nothing was out of order. I'm confident it was a hallucination due to lack of sleep. After that, I took steps to sort my life out so I could sleep like normal again, and I haven't had any more experiences like that. I wasn't a night worker, but I worked in a mall that might have been haunted. A couple of the times I had to work midnight release parties, I worked for EB Games at the time, my co-worker and I witnessed some weird shit. Like lights in the other stores coming on on their own, and what sounded like phantom music coming from somewhere. One of my other co-workers said she saw a small child running around after closing up one night. She followed him for obvious reasons, but he just seemed to disappear. She got the security guard involved, and they both searched up and down the area and didn't find anything. I talked to a couple of the security guards who worked there, and they said stuff like that was pretty common and that motion sensors installed in some of the stores were tripped so often that they'd learned to basically just ignore them when it happened. Which doesn't seem like a very smart thing, but the mall was pretty badly run anyway. I only worked there for about 7 months, and the potential ghosts were the least of our worries. So in the early 1990s, I was a security guard for a gated community. We had a guard shack at the entrance, and we would have to open the gate with the push of a button to let homeowners in and construction workers in. I always worked the night shift from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. So one morning on my shift around 2.40 a.m., I had to use the bathroom, which was in the guard shack, and being so silent at this hour, I could hear if any car drove up. So I am sitting on the toilet for a few minutes, and then all of a sudden I hear feet slamming on the road, running fast, coming out of the gated community down the hill towards the security shack. So immediately, I pulled up my pants and ran outside. I looked all around, and no one was there. Mind you, we have flood lights all around the shack. So immediately, I went out on patrol. I did a quick drive onto the main highway in front of the shack with no one in sight. I also patrolled the ranch with no one around. I know what I heard, and to this day, I cannot think of a logical answer. I worked as a bartender for about 5 years. I would usually get out around 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. on weekends. One bar I worked at was next to a small portion of the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. It was a Saturday night. Some of my friends would usually hang out with me at the bar until I got out. So we were all talking, and I was moving some just clean glasses around. I randomly looked outside and saw two red dots in the woods, about four inches apart from each other but evenly leveled. So I'm staring at these things, thinking, what the heck are those? When all of a sudden the two dots rose up about seven feet in the air, and I could see that the red things were probably eyes because I saw a silhouette shape of something crouching underneath them when it suddenly stood tall. It was blacker than the darkness around it in the woods, so it was the darkest thing I've ever seen. Suddenly, it turned to its left and started walking farther into the woods. Of course, none of my friends saw it, I didn't have time to point it out. So they didn't believe me. But I know what I saw. A strange looking fox's face literally looked like it had a pixelated skull superimposed over the top of it. I work in an animal shelter and was out doing the morning dump checks, checking the perimeter for any dumped pets overnight, and had one of our resident dogs with me, who was absolutely oblivious to the strange looking fox perched on the wall opposite. I watched it for a while, half expecting the skull thing to disappear in the way that exhaustion induced hallucinations do, but it didn't. It was shimmering in the moonlight. I eventually finished my checks and continued walking up the road, and I could still feel these eyes burning into my back. I turned around, and it was still there, watching. Our dog finished its morning toilet, and I turned around to head back with this thing still watching me. Usually foxes run off at the sight of humans, but this one stayed. Obviously, the logical explanation is that it was sick with a skin condition giving the fur around the face a skull-like appearance, and it didn't run away because it was dying or too ill to move. I'm generally not scared of foxes, but this thing terrified me, and I'm still shuddering at the thought of it several years later. The other explanation I have is a shapeshifter. 
I used to work on a hospital campus at a place where patients receiving treatment stayed. It was like Ronald McDonald House, but for adults. I usually worked a second shift. There was a little bit of wood around the place and a walking path. After turning down the lights and just having a lamp on at the front desk, the place became a little eerie. As long as we check in and out patients and answer the phones, we are allowed to sit there and read. Now I should mention that I've had a few creepy experiences there and consider myself somewhat sensitive. On this particular night, I had been reading about the Fae and people's encounters. I had also been learning about opening up my third eye. I like to read about all kinds of things. I am spiritual but skeptical too. Well, it was getting close to the end of my shift, and I started getting ready to leave. As I walked out of the automatic door, nobody was around. I got the distinctive feeling that someone was walking behind me. So much so that the hair on the back of my neck stood up. As I got to my car, I turned around to see if someone was there, and there was no one. I then heard a high-pitched giggle from the bushes. I got goosebumps all over and got the hell out of there. This experience happened during my high school years. My mother used to work night shifts, so I was home all alone. It was a deep night when I suddenly felt like something was watching me, so I woke up, and my sight fell directly at the end of my bed. The bed used to be located under a window, and there was a street lamp outside, so it wasn't that dark in my room. There she was, a tall, gray-skinned woman in a cape, a torn, dirty white dress with dark spots all over. Her lips were purple, and she was missing both eyes. There were two gaping holes instead of them. I pushed myself towards the wall behind me, scared shless, eyes wide open. I lost my breath for a moment. I couldn't believe what I was seeing at that moment. The lady then dispersed into the background, but I was teary and shaking from this experience and did cover myself in a blanket as if it were supposed to protect me in some way. Now, I know I might have had sleep paralysis, but I swear I was awake. I could move my body, and I registered my breathing. Maybe the mind played a trick on me. Dunno. I'm a carer and have been for about 5 to 6 years, and I prefer to work nights as it's a calmer working experience. I've seen and heard many strange things, but two that stick out I've decided to share. 1. I was on shift one night, and every hour we have to do checks on the residents to make sure they are okay and are still with us. So I'm doing my checks, and everything is going okay until I get to the last room. This lady likes her door closed at night so the light in the corridor doesn't wake her up, and I go to open her door, but I can't move it. It's as if someone is pushing it shut from the other side. I try two-thirds times to open it, and it won't budge. Fearing the lady has fallen behind, I go get the nurse on shift and my colleagues. Each of us tries to open the door, but it won't move. After 20 minutes, the door opens easily as it should, and the lady is asleep in bed, snoring away, and there is nothing there to have kept closed. I should mention this was in a part of the building where no one likes to be alone, as it feels like you are being watched, and on a couple of occasions, a shadow has been seen in some of the rooms. 2. I came in shift and found out one of the residents had passed away 30 minutes before us night staff got there. We were waiting for the undertakers to come collect the body, and it could be up to two hours before they got there. As we were going about our job, the buzzer in that room went off. I went and switched it off and left the room. His buzzer went off every 10 minutes until the undertakers arrived. None of us could explain why it was doing that. So it literally happened a few minutes ago. I'm working the night shift as a janitor here at a fairly large, 200 beds, nursing home. We have people pass away pretty much weekly. I've been working here for a year and a half and haven't seen anything until now. I'm in the janitor supervisor's office, just taking a break, playing my switch, and in there for a good half hour. I decide to go take out the trash in the break room, and as I open the door to leave, I see a pair of legs walk by. I was looking sort of downward as I opened the door, so I didn't see any upper body features. Anyway, I see them walk by, and I immediately look up and over to the direction they went, and… nothing. It was quiet, and nobody was around. I thought it was just a nurse or CNA walking to a different hall, but nope. Spooky shit. I worked nights at a dog kennel. During the night, we just walked the dogs around the parking lot so they could go to the bathroom. The parking lot was surrounded by a wooded area on most sides. There was a stray cat colony living in the woods behind the parking lot. Every time I'd walk a dog through the parking lot, the cats would sprint away and hide in the woods. They did not like the dogs at all, they were terrified of them. One night I'm walking a dog, and I see the cats, but this time they're sprinting out of the woods towards me. All the cats just kind of gathered in the middle of the parking lot, completely ignoring the barking dog I had. It definitely freaked me out. 
What was out in the woods that scared the cats out so much that they came running towards me and a dog they were usually terrified of? It was probably just a few coyotes or something, but I felt really creepy wondering what was scaring the cats so badly just out of view in the woods. So where we work, part of the job description is taking turns watching the camp at night, making sure nothing crazy happens. Anyway, to set the scene, we'll call my coworker Joe. Joe was leading his group of young boys through the desert mountains of some Native American land. They had been walking since sunup and had run out of water. The sun was setting, and they needed to find shelter and water. One of our rules is that we don't hike at night because it has proven dangerous. Anyway, as desperation set in and the sun began disappearing behind the horizon, Joe's group stumbled upon a diamond-shaped puddle in the ground. Strangely, it seemed like water was rising from this spot as if it were a spring. Next to this puddle was a dry, open field with a peculiar altar in the middle. There was nothing on it yet. Out of necessity, they camped there that night. Joe took the first night watch. He felt as if something was watching him, and though we're not supposed to use our headlamps except for emergencies, he constantly scanned the field with them to make sure nothing was there. It eventually ran out of batteries. Near the end of his night watch, this cold chill ran up his spine, and the feeling came strongly that something didn't want him there. He glanced into the field, finding two angry red eyes in the distance. He was terrified, but he finished his shift. When he woke up the next person to take the shift, he did what most of us co-workers would have done, crawled into his sleeping bag, saying to himself, Vailp, hopefully that doesn't kill us. And I tried to sleep. The next morning, he woke up and counseled with our O-workers. They all said they saw the same thing. The group walked over to the altar, where a rabbit was freshly torn in half. I work in private duty nursing. One of my patients lives out in the countryside, in a small trailer. His street is the only residential one within a one-mile radius. His room has a door to the back. Behind the trailer are nothing but shrubs and trees. Anyway, the family has like three dogs who don't really make that much noise. At first, they would bark at me, but they stopped once they got to know me. One night, it was like 3 a.m., and it was cold as duck. I started hearing the dogs bark like crazy. At first, I thought they saw a raccoon, a possum, or a tlacuake, so I thought nothing of it. Suddenly, I hear a knock on the door. I froze up, thinking about who it could be. I know it wasn't a family member since they were asleep and the dogs don't bark at them. I wait for a couple of seconds to think about what to do. I waited it out and didn't hear a second knock. After a while, the dogs stopped barking. About an hour later, I decided to look outside. I didn't see anybody there. I forgot about the whole thing for the night, thinking that maybe I just imagined someone knocking and the dogs really were just barking at some animal. My shift ends, and I go home to get some sleep. The next day, I'm at my patient's trailer again. The parents are about to go to sleep, so I give them a brief report. They are about to go to sleep when the mom turns around and says, if someone knocks, don't open the door. I still work there. I work at a mental hospital. It gets really weird there at night, when I only work on occasion. I was there when I first started on the children's unit, and I heard the sound of a small child crying hysterically. I checked every damn room, and the sound did not stop the whole time I was checking. Every child was sleeping. Below that unit are a gym and offices. Above it is the cafeteria. So you know there weren't patients on another unit. At another spot, I went in the middle of the night to drop off some papers at one of my boss's mailboxes, and I heard the most horrifying screams. I later found out that in that spot, they used to do electric shock therapy. The last experience I had was one where I heard some pounding and yelling and more yelling at the fire escape. I called security because I thought someone was stuck, and when they looked, no one was there. In that area, they used to do lobotomies. My boyfriend and I used to work the graveyard shift from home. We worked from the living room, with a view of the dining room in front of us, a glass panel door separates both rooms. Whenever we worked, we had the lights on in the living room but turned them off in the dining room. From our peripherals, both of us have had experiences seeing shadows zip past the door, basically feeling and seeing lots of movement in the dining room during the dead of night with no one present. For a while, I changed my shift and stopped working at around 12 a.m. or 1 a.m., but my boyfriend would work until the wee hours of the morning, sometimes until 6 or 7 a.m. He's seen a lot of shadowy figures and once even caught a quick glimpse of one standing behind a chair in the dining room, flipping its long hair. He describes them as elementals, basically, non-human spirits of trees, plants, etc. My boyfriend has very strong extrasensory gifts, and as a child, I used to see people's auras. He even jumped into a pond once when he was very small, and when questioned by his mom, 
He answered that he did so because the fish in the pond were talking to him. We have a couple of experiences that happened at night in this same house, but not necessarily while working, such as doors unlocking themselves and opening. We woke up to my bedroom door unlocked and slightly ajar twice during the same night, even after ensuring that the door was closed and locked before sleeping. Small things like that. In my experience, these entities are not harmful or negative. I was just curious about human beings. I used to work overnight doing phone support. Let me just say that the area in general we worked in has always had a weird vibe to it, stuff that doesn't seem exactly out of place but just abnormal in a way that's difficult to explain. To make matters worse, there's a cemetery about a mile up the road, and it can kind of get in your head when you're thinking about it. Off the top of my head, I've experienced. Weird lights are in the sky. Not your typical that might be an airplane, but as co-workers and I would be outside and see a light off in the distance hovering, it would move up vertically, make a sudden and quick horizontal downward slope, go up vertically again, and take off. Strange lights are in the building across the street from us. Big building, not sure how many stories, but very tall. I was abandoned up until this year, for maybe four years or so. Occasionally, lights would come on, go off, and come on again. You could see what looked like people roaming around with flashlights. I would hear singing late at night outside, all throughout the year. Definitely a woman's voice, I couldn't make out what was being sung and could never find out where it was coming from. Coworker doppelgangers. Stones would be thrown at us from seemingly nowhere. There is a very small pond next to the building, surrounded entirely by a fence and high grass. Sometimes it sounded like something massive had jumped inside of it, followed by heavy sounding steps. Okay, this is not from me, but from my uncle's best buddy, Theodore. He worked as a night guard at a port in 1996, which means he was around 35 years old then. Anyway, it was an hour after his shift began. He was sitting in a small guard room in front of a huge storage room in the port. He had a radio playing some stuff in low volume, and his eyes were heavy. Suddenly, as he reports, he feels like he was pushed off the chair by a force. He gets super scared and tries to do a reality check. He assumes that he got off balance because of the sleepiness, and he calms down. Anyway, he proceeds to put his head on the counter, where he had the radio on, and relax. As the sleep takes him slowly, he hears jam frequencies from the radio, which then turns off. He says that after that, he got really creeped out and called on the wireless to the security center, which was around one kilometer away. He hears jamming only. So he proceeds to leave the guard house and head towards the other storage behind the one where he was to meet the other guard named Thomas. As he passes next to the storage he was guarding, he sees a light. It was the flashlight of Thomas who was heading for him. He says that the cameras inside and outside the storage that Theodore was guarding caught suspicious movement, so he was coming for him to inform him and open the storage to check. They opened the service door and searched for a bit. They found some kind of mess on the counters next to the door, where they put some papers and tools. Other than that, nothing. Thomas says, hey, probably a ghost, and nods to Theodore to move out as there was nothing. Theodore asks him if he meant it, and Thomas says, well, they say a few things about ghosts in the port, but I never experienced anything, so I call it bullshit. Theodore then decides to tell him what happened in the guard room, and Thomas was calling it bullshit again. The next night, as Theodore's shift began, Thomas came up to him and told him that he told the security boss about Theodore's story, and he wasn't amazed, as somewhere in 1989 or so there was something involving an accident involving three to four port workers who got smashed under a container, and since then there has been stuff going on. I work the PM shift, 3 PM to midnight, at a hotel. We're only about 7 years old or so, but most definitely haunted by what most of the staff calls Daisy, or the little girl ghost. At night, we have the usual shenanigans. Daisy will giggle in empty hallways or our breakfast area, change the channels on the lobby TV, and open the occasional door. Guests have reported having someone sit on their feet in our first floor rooms, 115 in particular. I like Daisy, she apparently thinks I'm fun to mess with. Whoever she is, she's harmless. The creepiest thing she's done, though, happened to both me and a coworker. I was ending my shift, standing at the front desk around 12.30 am, and giving him the pass down report. I was talking about a guest on the fourth floor who'd been giving me grief about his rate earlier in the evening when I caught sight of a shadow moving where no shadow should be, about two feet tall. I stopped talking mid-sentence and turned to look at it. Moments later, it just vanished, as if it had never been there in the first place. I turned back to my coworker to see him staring at the same spot. I used to work at a nursing home for about six months. 
I found out relatively early on that this building used to be something else entirely until it burned down, causing a few children to die in the process. The memory of what it used to be has faded now, but it doesn't affect the story. When I worked here, the elderly individuals would complain often of a boy wearing a yellow jacket who would keep them up at night. They would sometimes come out of their rooms during the night shift to complain about him or talk loudly over dinner about the weird noises or the little boy. Some would even complain about their doors and windows opening during the night. There was one night where one of the elderly men with Parkinson's disease began to throw a fit about the boy burning in his room. He was prone to lash outs but could generally be persuaded to calm down after a bit, but on this night he wouldn't. He kept begging every staff member to save the boy and became so distressed that we had to call someone to pretend to remove the boy before he would calm down. I never personally saw the boy in the yellow jacket, but he was talked about so often by the residents and occasionally by the staff that it's hard for me to believe he wasn't there. Years ago, I was a night shift CNA for an assisted living facility. I had a resident who had a wild week. She didn't have dementia or Alzheimer's either, so it added more weirdness to the situation. It was about midnight when I was doing my rounds when she burst out of her room holding her giant cross and looked as white as a ghost. I asked her, what's happening? Did you have a bad dream? She replied, after she caught her breath, that there was someone in her room telling her to get out. Now we have wanderers in our facility, and I looked around in her room thinking one may have spooked her. I found nothing. She followed me around that night and didn't go off to bed until 4 a.m. I thought that was the last of it. I was wrong. The next night, it happened again. She once again claims a man is in her room, telling her to leave. Once again, I check her room and find nothing. This is when things got really weird. One night, when I was in the back helping a resident, my buzzer went off and the front door was opened. I quickly finished up what I was doing and bolted to the front door. Those doors are locked at night. When I found the corner to the front office, I saw her standing outside with the door wide open, she was looking at the sky in awe. I asked her what she was doing, as it was 2 a.m. at this point, and she looked at me, put her hand on my shoulder, and said, death is coming for X. I had to let him in. I coaxed her into the building with a cup of decaf coffee and some biscuits. She told me about the man in her room again and how he's making it difficult for her to sleep. Curiosity got the best of me, and I asked if she could tell me what he looked like. I really don't believe in the paranormal. I feel like everything can be explained, but I can't explain how she accurately described a resident who lived in her room years ago. He was an angry man who didn't want to be in the facility in the first place, and he passed away after refusing his medication. He didn't like anyone in his room except a few CNAs. She even got his name right. Her family started getting concerned for her well-being and asked to have her transferred to a hotel. After she was moved down the hall, her nightmares stopped. I asked the other PCWs and CNAs if any of them mentioned anything about the previous resident in her old room, all have stated they didn't. I used to work as a corrections officer. I have plenty of really creepy stuff that happened over those five years, but by far this is my favorite incident. I was assigned to the Singleman Cells wing of the jail, which is basically solitary confinement for inmates who were being punished for breaking rules in the jail. So around 5 a.m., Medical calls for all inmates that need medication to be escorted from my wing to medical to receive their meds. I pull out two guys, restrain them, and instruct them to face the wall and await the guard who will be escorting them. As the three of us are there, I begin to hear a woman crying. I was new to that jail and didn't think anything of it, and as I'm just listening to this woman cry, I slowly start to realize a few things. There are neither females in this wing nor in any wing where men are. The female wing is down the hall, sealed tight, with about three doors in between the hall and the actual wing. There are only about two other males in the wing who are asleep, aside from us three. I look up at the inmates and notice they have this kind of smile on their faces as they were watching me realize what was going on, and I ask them, do you guys hear that? One of the inmates responds, almost every night, boss. As a child, my father was a security guard, and he had a job working the night shift at an abandoned hospital. From what I've read, the hospital opened in 1988 and closed in 2003. My father started working there as night shift security in 2004. I've always been close with my father, and he would bring me with him to work. He would just sit on the computer between rounds and let me explore the abandoned buildings that made up the hospital. I had many paranormal experiences during the time he worked there as the night security guard from 2004 to 2011. I saw a bunch of things. If you guys want to hear about the other things I saw there, let me know. This one stands out because it was my first experience there. I was exploring, and I had wandered into the old ICU when I heard humming coming from one of the rooms. I walked in there, and I saw a young woman, probably about 20 with long black hair and blue eyes, 
sitting on the bed. She was very pale and wearing a hospital gown. I saw her and immediately froze, just looking at her. She quickly realized that I was looking at her, and she turned her head and looked at me. When we made eye contact, she smiled at me and said hi, little girl, then disappeared. I think she was just a lost spirit, one of many that were in that hospital. As I said, I saw many other apparitions in that hospital, including seeing her again multiple times. I worked at a hotel that also rented rooms at a house built in 1864 a few blocks away. There's usually just minor activity, dead bolts on the doors locking themselves, light bulbs unscrewing themselves so guests thought they were out, housekeeping seeing shadows, alarm clocks going off and rooms left empty for weeks. But one guest came into the hotel as soon as I opened it for the morning shift. She had very clearly not slept well at all and was visibly upset. I asked her how her stay was, and she was evasive at first, but I pressed a little because if something in her room or service was wrong, I wanted to make sure it was addressed. She told me a story I'm still not sure I believe. She got back to her room kind of tipsy around 2 when the bars closed. She kicked off her shoes and then flopped into bed. While she was drifting off to sleep, the closet door opened and banged on the wall. She got up and pushed it closed. Then it opened again, so she closed it, wedged her shoes under the door, and tried to go to bed again. Just as she was drifting off to sleep, her shoes flew across the room, and the door slammed open. She grabbed all her stuff, drove to the hotel, and slept in the parking lot. I was working night shift in a hospital that has been operating since the 1800s. It's a large manor house and a specialist hospital for patients with brain injuries, spinal injuries, and physical disabilities. It's a rather large building but has less than 30 patients at the moment, so the entire ground floor is empty at the moment. During night shift, the nursing staff are allowed to go into one of the hospital bedrooms downstairs on break to rest, and that is what I did yesterday evening. It was around 1.30 am, and no one else was on the ground floor when I heard three knocks on the door in a row. I did immediately feel uneasy. The older staff told stories about the house, it was exorcised or something similar 20 years ago, apparently due to strange things happening during a renovation of the hospital. It was said to be the unhappy spirit of a matron who had not passed on, but the paranormal activity stopped as soon as the hospital was blessed. Generally, the house is not known for a lot of spirit activity, maybe the odd door slamming and figure seen were reported. I'm used to hearing ghost stories while working in hospital settings, but I have never experienced anything too scary myself. I went to investigate at the door, but nothing was there, and then I sat down. It happened again, three knocks in a row, and then I said to myself, if it happens again, I'm going to go back upstairs to the ward I was working on. It did, and so I got the most awful feeling of dread, and I returned upstairs. The other nurse just laughed, but it did freak me out. I searched online for three knocks in a row and terrified myself even more, learning that apparently it's the three knocks of death. I wondered if anyone here would know something more. I am a nurse and have mainly worked the night shift for close to 10 years, so. Without giving out my location, I will just say that I work in a care home, and as most know, there are a lot of deaths. One floor was closed down for renovations, so there were no patients on this floor. It was locked so that no one without the master key would be able to access this particular floor until renovations were completed. Now I was outside having a smoke at about 3 a.m. with security when my pager started going off with multiple call bell notifications. Please note that we each carry a pager, myself and the personal support workers. My pagers pick up every bell for the floors I am responsible for, so two floors are one this night because of the renovations being completed, and their pagers go off for their own patients, 16 or so for each of them. I look at my pager, and the room numbers that I am being alerted to are on that locked up floor. I quickly show security, who looks just as confused and perplexed as I do, and he says it must be a malfunction, right? Then his phone starts ringing, and because the extension from the desk on the floor is locked, he opts not to answer it. How can this be? We both look at each other palely. He then jumps up, as he is the only one who carries that master key during a night shift, to see if he has lost it. Perhaps someone was playing a trick on us, but nope he has it. Reluctantly, we decide to go to the floor together, which was in the basement of this particular facility, to see if someone got onto the floor somehow and is trying to scare us or play a prank. We arrive at the unit, and it is locked up. He unlocks, and we enter the dark unit and realize we are the only ones there, yet every single call bell in every room and bathroom has been pulled. To pull the call bells, you must hit the red button on the cord or pull the cord in the bathroom next to the toilet. We stuck together and went room to room, 40 damn rooms, with every call bell pulled room and bathroom, and we had to manually shut off every one. 
we locked the floor back up and got the hell out of there. I am working there again right now, and I am hoping nothing eventful happens tonight. I used to work a night shift at an assisted living home. It had about 40 residents and two overnight workers. Lots of strange little things would happen frequently, like seeing shadows or feeling like you were being watched. Nothing malicious or too scary. However, there was one night that really stood out. I seriously thought I was losing my mind by the end of the night. Not so coincidentally, this happened on the night of a full moon. Everyone who has ever worked in a medical field knows that people really do go crazy during full moons, anyway, like I said earlier, we would occasionally see shadows. This night was a bit different. About two hours into the shift, I started seeing black flickers out of the corner of my eye. The occasional black flicker turned into frequent black flickers. Frequent black flickers turned into solid dark shapes flashing just out of my field of vision. Some are small, and some are freakishly tall. The black masses were very solid black and human-esque in shape. The scariest was when I saw a seven-foot-tall figure walk behind me. This scared the ever-loving shit out of me. I was not trying to freak my coworker out, I just casually asked her if she was noticing anything strange tonight. As it turns out, she was experiencing the exact same things I was. But we had a job to do. We parted ways and kept busy. Suddenly, I heard the very distinctive sound of a glass crockpot lid slide into place. Weird, I know, well, I was nowhere near the kitchen, but I blew it off, thinking maybe a resident was up late and doing dishes in their room. About 15 minutes later, I was in the stairwell on the opposite side of the building, and I heard the noise again. Still weird, but I was not about to accept a crockpot ghost, so I blew it off. Then it happened again. And again. And again. All within an hour, and all in different areas, and different floors, of the building. At this point, I was freaked out and decided to just calm down and take a break. A few minutes later, my coworker walked in with a terrified look on her face. She asked me if I was just upstairs in room 28. At this time, room 28 was not occupied and had not been occupied since I had started that job months earlier. After I told her no, she explained that she noticed it was open with the lights off and immediately came to get me because she had a bad feeling. Now, it may have been a resident because some of the elders have dementia and wander at night, but the door should have been locked. Of course, mistakes are made, so we went up to check. No one is there. Nothing out of the ordinary, except the fact that the room was almost 15 degrees colder than every other place in our building, even though the temperature was set much higher. Just then, we suddenly got three call lights at the same time. On an average night, we would maybe get three calls spaced throughout the night. But this was no ordinary night. I do need to point out that even in our rush out, I absolutely made sure to lock the door. We tended to the residents, and everything was going well. One of the residents just so happened to be a little further down the hall from room 28. After I finished and walked back, I shit you not. Mother flippin' room 28 was open. There is no way it could have been the co-worker because I know she was still working with someone on a different floor. I know I checked it on my way out, so there was no explanation. Luckily, my co-worker was just finishing up downstairs, so we went back and checked the room again. Surprise, surprise, nothing was there. The temperature in the room had gone back up to what it was originally set to. We closed and locked the door again. Thankfully, nothing happened in that room for the rest of the night. Throughout the rest of our shifts, both myself and my coworker kept seeing shadows and dark shapes, and I kept hearing the weird clattering noise. We were getting an unsettling amount of resident calls, and at one point I even saw a floating mist at the end of the hall. Needless to say, dawn could not come fast enough. About a month ago, I started a new job doing security at a local community college. Being the new guy, I was pretty much shafted with the night shift right off the bat. Normally, I work from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. on weekdays and from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. on weekends. It's a nice job, good pay, and plenty of overtime. The campus doesn't have dorms, and I'm the only one here at night. It gets lonely and very quiet. Watching the security cameras is monotonous, and patrolling the empty, dark halls can only be done for so long before boredom really sets in. When I first started, I had the expectation that I'd be given the worst shift, at the worst times. I was right. I was put on the night schedule before I even got to see the place, really. The place is like this, it used to be an old Catholic academy for girls until the late 1960s. It isn't particularly rural, but more suburban. Sits up on a hill overlooking a highway. There are five floors in the new part of the building, four floors in the old convent, and chapel wings. It was first opened in the 1890s by a religious order of nuns, particularly for young ladies who also wanted to be nuns. 
it grew out of that until eventually attendance dwindled and it was sold to the state, who in turn converted it into a community college after almost a decade of disrepair. I'm not someone who dabbles in the occult or knows a lot about the supernatural. I mind my own business and try to do my job. But recently, this place has put me in rare form. I don't scare easily now. But just in the short time that I've worked here, I've started to think something's up. The security cameras are typical CCTV cameras, there are no audio recordings. But on the monitor, I'll hear crackling, like static. There's no way to enable or disable audio on the monitor. It comes and goes. I'll hear footsteps, like leather soles, clopping down the hallways through the security monitor. When I go on patrols in the convent wing, the lockers that are typically reserved for the cleaning crew and facility staff will be unlocked and wide open. I've seen them open on the cameras, but only my supervisor can play back the footage. Doors that I know I locked during my first patrol will then be unlocked and open on the third patrol. The motion sensors will detect something and turn on when I'm not even on that floor, and when I am, sometimes they won't even react when I move down the hall. And when I go to what is now the library, which used to be the chapel, I can hear piano music coming from down the hall I just came from. So far, I've heard the prelude to Charpentier's Te Deum, I used to take piano lessons as a youngster. I don't really drink anymore, I don't take any drugs, prescribed or not. There is no history of mental illness, and this isn't just a one-night thing. I don't know how to tell my supervisor about it without sounding mad or cowardly. I work in the hotel industry, in Argentina, as a receptionist. I work three different ones, mostly night shifts. So, you can say that I'm kind of a night guard too, or something like that. Okay, so during the pandemic days and post-pandemic, the industry was at its lowest, of course, and the people coming were almost null. Our work mostly was to keep the building safe, guarding and just receiving the little movement of people there were. Also, we have a small company of the army and small groups of soldiers that were doing a campaign against the cartels of the city and guarding the streets. They were sent by the government. Anyway, the hotel was almost empty, more so at night. There was a story of a little child that I never met because she was a host there before I started to work there. She was sick, I think she has cancer. And the treatment wasn't available in her little town. So her parents went to my city and installed it in this hotel. The little kid, a sweet girl, as I was told, grew fond of the employees, and everybody liked her. One day, she died. After that, a lot of things started to happen at the hotel. One of those things was that one night, a soldier starting his morning shift, like at 5 a.m., went down the reception and casually asked if there was a little girl as a host, because she was lost, and he even went and tried to get the child to walk to her room. He said the child was maybe scared and he just kept walking, watching her and telling her that he was going to get some help for her. Of course, there wasn't anyone with those characteristics inside the hotel. The girl described died a few years ago. The soldier went pale. I think he even changed his morning shifts. I just finished my shift at the hospital. Do you ever get a vibe from a place, like a gut feeling that something isn't right? Well, anyway, it was a quiet night, nothing crazy, but I had two weird experiences. There was a little girl who came in because she was having an asthma attack. Well, I was told she was alone and there was no family with her, so I went in, and I saw this little frail girl sitting on the bed wheezing and sounding like crap. But the weird part to me was that she had this doll, a raggy and doll, but the color of it was like someone inverted the colors, like it had green hair and stuff. I asked about it, but all I got was its name, which was Lucy according to the little girl, but what struck me was the fact that this girl claims she has no parents and lives with Lucy, whatever that means, but anyway, she's going to be okay, they are giving her over to child protection services or something. My second story is a lot shorter. This old man comes into the ER complaining about chest pain and is under constant observation, it could have been a heart attack. Well, I go in to evaluate him, and I kid you not, I see a tooth coming out of the back of his neck, a human tooth. It looked like it was growing out of the skin right underneath his shirt collar. Well, anyway, I told the nurse, but she just shrugged it off and said the doctor would look at it in the morning. So I used to work as an overnight security guard, and where my office was, I was at the entrance of the building, maybe 15 to 20 yards from the front door. Now this front door was a set of automatic sliding doors, the first one led from the outside into a little area where you could set umbrellas or dry your shoes, and then the second door opened into the facility. The second one had an automatic lock that locked at 10 pm you needed a keycard to access the door, and only the night shift nurses, aides, and security had said keycards. Remember this for later, now I'd worked there for about 4-5 to five months, and nothing like this ever happened. 
but one night I was in my office watching the cameras and listening to music at a low level so I could hear if someone came walking in and needed me. And I heard the second automatic door open. Now I just thought it was one of the nurses who liked to take the long way to her unit, so I looked over to say hello, and there wasn't anyone there. Then I thought someone must have left, and I didn't hear them walk past. Then, about five minutes later, it happened again, and there wasn't a single soul that walked past me. So I found the two cameras that showed the inside of the area between the two doors and the cameras that showed the view from the entrance to my office to that door, and I rewound the footage to just before, and lo and behold, there wasn't anyone. The door just opened. Now I thought maybe there was a mechanical error, so I went and walked out and tried to walk back in, but I had to use my card because it was locked. So I made a note for my boss and went about my shift. Flash forward to the next night. He left me a note saying that maintenance looked at the door and it was fine, nothing was broken. Two hours later, the door opened and stayed open, so I closed my office door, fearing it was an evil spirit. Then the door shut, opened again, and then closed. So I opened my door and asked, are you evil or good? And it opened and shut quickly to tell me it was a good spirit. We decided on an answering system, hold open for no, open and close fast for yes, and just a series of questions later, it was just a good spirit just checking on me. I've worked for three and a half years now as a psych tech at a unit that covers the southeast portion of my state. I will say that to start out, most nights the unit is really quiet and can be boring. So here are a few of the experiences on the unit that are more paranormal or spiritual. Naturally, with the type of individuals that stay here, the unit can change its feelings rather quickly. I've had individuals who I never met before know strange things about me or other patients, such as where I've buried my dogs to rest, the names of family members, or the streets I've grown up on. You'll get a strange vibe walking by certain patients. At times, my patients will say creepy stuff, such as being told, the devil has sent its demons to watch me and to not mess up. I witnessed a lady who came in with suicidal thoughts slowly progress to sitting in a corner and screaming nonstop till she couldn't talk. This lady screamed the same phrases over and over in an empty room, I didn't do anything to you, leave me alone. Why are you allowed to hurt me? I'm not a witch. The unit also has one room I dislike because, no matter what room the patient is assigned to stay in, they always seem to get much worse before they get better. The room is always cold, even when the heat comes through the vent. I can recall four patients asking to switch rooms because the shadows in the room surrounds them when they sleep and buzzes at them all night. My most recent experience while doing my safety check was in an unoccupied room with the door open. Which previously in the shift I knew was locked because I checked all the unused rooms to make sure they're indeed locked. I thought housekeeping had come up to clean the room, possibly since a patient was discharged from there during the shift before. The next thing I knew, I had a soap bar and a shampoo bottle thrown at me. It wasn't a joke throw either, but a rip right at me. The door slammed shut. I think a patient is in there now. I open the door to a completely empty, cleaned room. I lock up the room, pick up the soaps, and try to tell the other tech I'm working with what happened. We pull up the camera, and sure enough, you can watch the event unfold in the hall. Not all experiences are bad or evil for the unit. The patients will sometimes tell me that they have family that's passed on, stay the night in their room, and visit with them till they fall asleep. Another time I had one patient tell me a giant white figure stood guard by their door and kept the shadow figures from coming in, and they were able to finally sleep. We do have a few regular figures that walk the yard and hang out in rooms. We call him the engineer because the figure is always seen in the utility closet. The mysterious stranger resembles the character out of a game. He's a tall guy in a tan trench coat and business hat walking the same path around 3 in the morning and disappears after he passes a big elm tree. I am a nurse and have mainly worked the night shift for close to 10 years, so I thought I would share one of my experiences with you. Without giving out my location, I will just say that I work in a care home, and as most know, there are a lot of deaths. One floor was closed down for renovations, so there were no patients on this floor. It was locked so that no one without the master key would be able to access this particular floor until renovations were completed. Now I was outside having a smoke at about 3 a.m. with security when my pager started going off with multiple call bell notifications. Please note that we each carry a pager, myself and the personal support workers. My pagers pick up every bell for the floors I am responsible for, so two floors are one this night because of the renovations being completed, and their pagers go off for their own patients, 16 or so for each of them. I look at my pager, and the room numbers that I am being alerted to are on that locked up floor. I quickly show security, who looks just as confused and perplexed as I do, and he says it must be a malfunction, right? Then his phone starts ringing, and because the extension from the desk on the floor is locked, 
He opts not to answer it. How can this be? We both look at each other palely. He then jumps up, as he is the only one who carries that master key during a night shift, to see if he has lost it. Perhaps someone was playing a trick on us, but nope, he has it. Reluctantly, we decide to go to the floor together, which was in the basement of this particular facility, to see if someone got onto the floor somehow and is trying to scare us or play a prank. We arrive at the unit, and it is locked up. He unlocks, and we enter the dark unit and realize we are the only ones there, yet every single call bell in every room and bathroom has been pulled. To pull the call bells, you must hit the red button on the cord or pull the cord in the bathroom next to the toilet. We stuck together and went room to room, 40 damn rooms, with every call bell pulled room and bathroom, and we had to manually shut off every one. We locked the floor back up and got the hell out of there. I am working there again right now, and I am hoping nothing eventful happens tonight. Not night shift, but I used to think my workplace was haunted. I would see in the corner of my eye a figure with a black head or black hair walking within the shelves when no one was in the store. Things would fall off the shelves all the time when placed carefully. In one corner of the store, further from the entrance, things would always fall off the shelf. One time, I placed it back and jokingly told the ghost to stop it. I walked off and heard it fall off again. No doors open, and there are no windows that can even open. So no draft. Also, once I was alone at the counter with my back turned to the counter, no customers are in the store. All of a sudden, I heard loud steps coming towards and behind the counter and felt a breeze, as if someone were storming up to me. I instantly thought that there was a customer in there that I didn't notice, and they were coming to attack me. I quickly turned, and there was nothing there at all. I haven't had anything happen in about a year now, though. I worked the night shift at a 1920s mental hospital. Obviously, countless people have died here for various reasons. Hangings, a murder or suicide, beatings, accidental overdose, electroshock therapy, etc. There are four floors, with the fourth floor being the well-known hot spot for paranormal activity. Me being security, I have to check it out every once in a while. The fourth floor is essentially an extremely long hallway, approximately 1800 steps, with housing units on both sides throughout. Each unit has a 5-inch thick steel door, and there's a window at the very end of the hall. They don't house patients due to the fact that the county took over a while before I started, and it's completely empty by the time the third shift rolls around. The fourth floor is also the only floor in the entire complex that is completely off the ground due to the complex being built into a hill. It is also where electroshock therapy took place a long time ago. This occurrence happened last Wednesday on the third shift. I wanted to do a walk through the fourth floor that night around 3 a.m. for no other reason than I was feeling brave. I walk all the way down the fourth floor to the window. Eventually, as I got closer, I started seeing that the window obviously needed cleaning. When I got about 5 feet away, all of a sudden there was a handprint that would have been extremely noticeable from even 15 feet away. I looked at the handprint, turned around, said nope, and walked back down the hall. On my way back from the window, I peek into a side office area with my flashlight just to look. Nothing kept going. After a couple seconds, it sounded like someone was running up behind me, so I walked even faster because everything in my body said not to turn around. As I kept walking, I passed by a unit, and as I passed, I heard what sounded like someone punching the door. Put it up to paranoia due to the running I heard prior, that is, until I passed another unit. Another loud thud, as if someone punched the door. So at this point, I start speed walking down the hall, and while I am there, I hear footsteps following mine. Mind you, these units are not connected at all, and the entire floor is entirely empty. That's just one of my experiences. I have also been having dreams of a white, skinny woman in a hospital gown who has black hair with bangs in her face. I always thought she was just a reoccurring person in my dreams until I talked with one of the CNAs that worked tonight in the kids' unit. I never brought her up to the CNA, we were just talking about ghosts, and she said that numerous people have said that they've seen the exact woman I just explained. I explained to the CNA in detail how she looked in my dreams, and she just went pale with her mouth hung open. Supposedly, this ghost is extremely well known throughout the hospital by various people. People have seen her in mirrors, have been locked in bathrooms, and have seen her just walking around. But in my dreams, she always just appears or runs up to me, grabs me, and screams in my face. There was this one dream in particular where I woke up from a dream to wake up in my duplex's stairway. I walk down the stairs, because that's where my bedroom is, and walk into my bedroom. Once in my bedroom, I see my bed, my fiancé sleeping on her side of the bed, and myself sleeping. In front of my closet, which is on my side of the bed, I see that same woman standing next to my body, just staring at me. I walk up to her, 
and I get the courage to ask her just who the hell she is. She looks at me, grabs me, screams in my face, then shoves me onto my bed, which is when I officially woke up at 3.15 am. I have no clue who this woman is at all, but I still dream about her every now and then. Every single dream is in a different place, but she's just there, and this has been going on since I started working at my job. A few years ago, I worked in a home for people with mental disorders and or disabilities. My profession was a totally different thing, but they were on the lookout and hired me on the spot. I was just there, cooking for the people, playing games, making music, and doing some art stuff, but quickly I was asked to do the night shifts too. We had a bed, a nightstand, and a flower in quite a big room to rest in. It was the room of the former parents of the house, a married couple who was in charge of everything in that house. As someone who hasn't slept well since youth, I was always wide awake, and so I started to read all the papers and notes about the house I could find. Quickly, I discovered that some horrible things had happened before, and this would be the reason they had to hire a lot of new people. So now the much stranger parts. Often at night, especially when I tried to rest, I heard voices, laughter, and distant music, so I got up again, thinking it was one of the patients. But whenever I left that wing of the building, it suddenly went quiet. I searched the house but never found a source. One day, I had my dog with me, a giant but blind one. Fearless and always hungry. But when we entered the room, she suddenly became shy and fearsome. I had to lay down some clothes of mine she could walk on, she ate food, pressed down on the floor, and quickly jumped in the bed. Then the chanting and laughter started, and she was growling like I had never heard before. I didn't find rest that night and talked to a co-worker later that day. We were alone in that house because all the patients were working. As I asked him if he thinks there's something haunting he clearly said yes, he and some others often hear laughter and music at night. While we talked, we were suddenly interrupted by two female voices speaking beside the service hatch in the kitchen. We looked at each other, opened the hatch, and found the room completely empty. Two other co-workers saw a white stretch limousine at night, my wife heard horses running around her when visiting, the dog started to bark at the same time, and there were a lot of strange stories. I used to work as a janitor for the local school district, and up until the last school year I worked there, I worked from 2.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. I was in the main hall that led from the main doors to the front of the 8th grade lockers and had side halls, one at the front, the nurse's office, conference room, and back entrance to the main office, one parallel to the main hall, back entrance to the cafeteria, gym, locker rooms, orchestra room, hall to the band and choir rooms, and doors to the dock, one paralleling the side hall up front, kitchen storage, auditorium, and one running up along the 8th grade lockers towards home EC, art, tech ed, keyboarding, and the other half of the auditorium. I was about halfway up and had headphones on because who doesn't love listening to music instead of the resident ghost? I looked towards the 8th grade lockers, and there was this shadow figure crossing from where the 7 8 grade bathrooms and our office were to the side hall leading to the back. What creeped me out the worst were the red eyes and the almost overwhelming sense of dread, almost like I was seeing something I shouldn't. Let's start off by saying that I work at a place with 5 floors and a basement. It used to be a house for nuns and priests. I have divided the story into small parts, describing everything I've seen on each floor. I got called up for a night shift since a colleague called in sick. I've never done a night shift here, so I took up the opportunity to see what it's like. Fourth floor, doing your rounds isn't the creepiest thing at all, the creepiest thing is going down the stairs again. You will see a black figure walking the hallway, just your average shadow, you know. Well, the thing is, the lift sometimes randomly goes to that floor during the night as if someone is calling it. Third floor, doing your rounds gets a little weirder here since it seems as though you aren't alone while on the floor. You will hear footsteps and see shadows on the wall walking past you. Second floor, exactly the same as the third floor except for one painting, which has a woman in it that sometimes changes position or even completely disappears. First floor, you will sometimes hear the piano play a D on the floor above you. Main floor, there is a black leather couch in the hallway where you will sometimes find a see-through man sitting with a cigar and a newspaper, he smiles and disappears when you greet him. Basement, the helpful poltergeist resides here. This is the place where, before my current company took up the building, the mortuary was. There are currently storage rooms, but the rooms are not marked with what is in them. But that doesn't matter because the night shift refills and gets knocks on the door to indicate where the item is. That's all. I used to be stationed on a fast attack submarine based out of Norfolk, Virginia. When in port, the mid-watch can be quite scary. It was from midnight until 6 o'clock, and there were only three people in the entire engine room, which was about half of the boat, 
and two of us were usually in a small room called maneuvering. There was a shutdown reactor operator who couldn't leave maneuvering, the shutdown electrical operator, who spent most of their time there, and the shutdown roving watch, who roamed the engine room. One night I was standing down as an electrical operator and doing my hourly engine room tour when I saw a full-bodied apparition out of the edge of my vision. I could see it surprisingly clearly. It was wearing the standard coveralls we always wore and was just standing there, writing on a clipboard. It looked a lot like one of the mechanics that worked with me, but not quite. As soon as I looked directly at it, it was gone. One of the mechanics had the craziest story, though. I was standing by the same watch when the shutdown roving watch, Brian, stepped in, looking white as a ghost with fear in his eyes. He immediately said that he was staying there for the rest of his watch and commenced to tell his story. He was taking logs down in the engine room, which is on the bottom floor up against the reactor compartment. He looked up from his logs to see a mist coming from the compartment behind that one. As it came in, it took the form of a woman floating down the walkway. When it was straight across from Brian, it stopped and looked directly at him, put its finger up to its lips in a shushing gesture, and then proceeded to float forward through the reactor compartment wall. I work at a psychiatric hospital that has been around for around 100 years. There are many old abandoned buildings mixed among the newer, more modern buildings that we use today. Over the years, I've heard many strange stories of ghosts and things that go bump in the night. I had been working a long stretch of night shifts, so I was a bit tired and struggling to make it through the shift. I decided to step out into the cool air and sneak a cigarette to wake myself up. I slipped out of one of the rear entrances that backed onto one of the old abandoned buildings, leaned against the brick wall, and lit my cigarette. It was winter, and the cool air was refreshing compared to the stuffy, stale air on the ward. I was looking down and crunching my feet in the snow when something caught my attention from the corner of my eye. In the building across the way, there was a strange bluish light flashing in one of the windows. Puzzled. I took a few steps towards it and looked around to see if there were any cars coming up the road that might be reflecting in the window, but the entire sight was still and quiet at 3 a.m. I continued to watch the light as it randomly blinked off and on. It wasn't steady, and at moments it was almost flashing as fast as a strobe light, other times it would remain on for 5 to 10 seconds before going dark for a bit. The strangest part was how the light didn't illuminate the entire window, only the top corner glowed with the strange blue light. I pulled out my cell phone and filmed it for a few minutes before returning to the ward. I asked the security guys if anyone had been patrolling the old building that night, and I was told that no one is allowed in there outside of daylight hours because there is no electricity to the building, and because the basement is completely flooded and the interior walls are crumbling, it's too much of a safety hazard. It was a creepy feeling, and my short video has been very popularly shared amongst my co-workers. Although this happened many years ago, I still get newbies at the hospital asking me to show them the ghost video. A few years ago, I was working a night shift on a geriatric rehabilitation ward in an old hospital that's since closed down. The ward is a long, L-shaped corridor, with the nurse's station situated at the bend. I was doing some paperwork at the nurse station, and the other nurse on duty was on her break, sitting in the lounge down the end of the corridor. Out of nowhere, I heard this almighty crash from one of the bedrooms, and I shot straight up and started running towards it. My colleague was coming down the corridor towards me, as we had both assumed that the gentleman in one of the single bedrooms had fallen out of bed. The man in this room was still fast asleep in bed, and his sensor mat that tells us if he's up had not activated. In the middle of the room lay his bedside cabinet, face down on the ground. Further across from that, the drawer was on the floor against the wall across from where the cabinet usually faced. We didn't really know what to make of it, so I picked up the cabinet and put the drawer back in it. We woke the man up to ask if he had thrown it but he was as confused as us. Realistically, he couldn't have anyway, as it was quite heavy and he was pretty frail, needing help to even mobilize. It's not possible that another patient had been in the room as we did a round immediately after and everyone was in bed, no one had been in the corridor prior to this happening. For the next few weeks, I felt really uncomfortable being in that room, even during my day duties, and I was so glad when the hospital was closed down, as it meant I got to move to a brand new one. My mom worked in a social club as a barmaid in the 80s and 90s. She always remembers it as a great place, friendly with the regulars and the other staff. One of the other staff members, whom we'll call Tom, is the brother of a family friend, whom we'll call Jim. My mom had been friends with this family for decades, they kind of lost touch, so I didn't meet Jim until I was about 16. After hearing this story a few times from my mom when I was younger, years later Jim told me it independently, out of the blue. You need to understand that this family is a hard-working family. Not the sort of people to even believe in the paranormal, let alone go around making up ghost stories. Back to the story, 
In the bar where my mom worked pulling pints, Tom worked as a doorman or bouncer. They obviously worked late nights, and therefore, at the end of the night, the bar would pay for taxis home for the staff to make sure they got home safely. One night, my mom and Tom shared a taxi home, I think with another staff member too. Tom was dropped off first, then the other staff member, because my mom lived in a cottage outside the city and was always the last to get home. Tom had been dropped off at a friend's house instead of his own. His friend was a bouncer too at another bar who'd just finished his shift a while earlier, so they'd planned to just hang out after their respective shifts. The next day, my mom was back at work, and Tom came in for his shift. He came and sat down at the bar in front of my mom and ordered a whiskey. I think licensing laws were a bit more lax in those days because my mom says it wasn't uncommon for them to all have a few drinks on shift. She started chatting with him as normal, and she said he seemed really quiet and didn't look as if he'd had much sleep. After some coaxing, he told her that something had happened, the story his brother Jim had told me 20 years later. After his shift, Tom had gone up the lift in the multi-story to his friend's flat, knocked on the door, and waited. A few moments later, his friend, whose name I can't remember, so we'll call him Steve, came to the door and invited Tom inside. They walked into the house, and Steve asked Tom if he wanted a coffee, which he accepted. Steve told him to grab a seat in the living room while he made their drinks. Tom took off his coat and hung it up at the door as Steve headed into the kitchen. Tom then walked up the hall and into the living room, where he saw that Steve's neighbor and her daughter were already sitting and watching television. Tom greeted them, and the mother turned and smiled to acknowledge him. He sat down and started making small talk, as he'd never met these girls before, and they weren't exactly the most chatty, just nodding and smiling. After not getting much of a response, Tom just sat with them and watched TV. After a few minutes or so, the woman and her daughter stood up out of their chairs, got on their hands and knees, and started crawling along the floor around the room. Perplexed, Tom stood and walked into the kitchen and said to Steve something along the lines of, what the duck are they doing? Have they been drinking? To which Steve replied, thank God, you can see them too. Tom had obviously freaked out and went back into the living room to see that they were both gone. Apparently this was a regular occurrence for Steve, who thought he was going mad and had been hallucinating. Until then, he was the only one who had seen them, and they repeated the same actions every night. After a bit of digging, they found out that there had been a fire some years before in that flat, where a woman and her daughter had died. Steve wasn't too disturbed, apparently, and just got used to them and sometimes chatted away to them as he didn't feel threatened, which is cute, I guess. This story gives me absolute goosebumps every time it's told.